famous phrase, she comes first, he comes next. Well, if you haven't, we're going to learn all about it. Today we're talking about S-E-X. Welcome back to Get Connected. I'm your host, Con Jackson, and no better person to find out if you're good in bed than our sex therapist, Dr. Ian Kerner, who joins us now. Doctor, welcome. Hey, Con, how are you? Hey, Dr. Kern, it's great to have you with us, and I know we're going to be talking about being good in the bedroom, but first and foremost, why have you partnered with KY? Well, KY Brand uh, has this awesome, uh, awesome new date night pack uh, in which they have basically paired their great intimacy enhancement products with a $10 coupon for two towards a movie, and so I think it's a great combination for having fun in the bedroom and out of the bedroom, and especially this year with Valentine's Day right on the way, I I'm all about not just having a great Valentine's Day, but really using that day as a jump start for a whole year of intimacy. So, um, so for me, I'm all about uh, having fabulous date nights together. So that's why I got together with KY Brand on this date night project. Well, Dr. Kerner, I'm excited to have you with us so we can all learn how we can be better in the bedroom. But first and foremost, tell us about the recent survey that was conducted and what surprised you the most. Well, you know, it was a survey that we conducted at the website goodinbed.com. We surveyed 2,500 Americans, and it was really about um, date night. And I, I frankly didn't know exactly what to expect because I personally believe that date nights are really important, that it's really important to prioritize that with your partner, but I didn't know how other Americans were, were going to feel. So one of the things that was a little surprising to me was that close to 100% of the respondents, 100% said that date nights made them feel closer to their partners, improved intimacy, and that over 90% said that date nights were crucial to having a great relationship. So that did surprise me a little bit, to be honest. Well, doctor, that certainly makes sense that making time for a date night is so important for relationships. Given these results, what is our call to action? Well. The call to action is to get out your day planner, uh, your night planner for that matter, and start scheduling a year's worth of date nights. Don't just start with Valentine's Day. Uh, schedule a whole year of them and get out there. And, and I really believe um, variety is the spice of life. If you go to KY Brand's Facebook page, Couples Place, I created a whole series of exclusive date night tip sheets, so things that you can do uh, on a budget. Uh, things that you can do at home, turning your bedroom into a love nest with a few simple touches, uh, day dates, adventure dates. So um, for me, the call to action is don't just plan a date night, really plan a lot of them and use a little imagination, use a little ingenuity and really have some fun and some novelty and some newness. Well, doctor, given that we need to be more creative, what would you say are maybe three things we can do to spice up our love life this week? Three solid tips that you can try this week. Uh, one thing I would say is when you see your partner, give your partner, and this is a great tip for the guys, give, your, give, give, give the woman in your life a hug for 30 seconds or more, okay? When you hug your partner for 30 seconds or more, especially in women, it boosts oxytocin levels. Oxytocin is the feel-good cuddle hormone. So basically, when you hug your partner for 30 seconds, you're really um, increasing that, you're increasing that cuddle hormone and you're increasing that desire for intimacy. Um, uh, another tip that I would say is get into what I call the five to one zone. Uh, studies have shown that the difference between couples who succeed and couples who fail is that the ones who have strong, successful relationships have uh, way more positive interactions than negative. And the actual ratio of positive to negative interactions for the ideal relationship needs to be five to one. So that means anytime you have a negative interaction with your partner, whether it's verbal, emotional, whether it's just rolling your eyes at your partner, you need to counter that with five positive interactions in some way. So you need to stay in the five to one zone. So again, I would say start off with those 30 second hugs, stay in the five to one zone. I, got, I gotta be honest, we talked about the date nights. I would say top in there is really being a little selfish about your relationship 
prioritizing intimacy. You know, if you're connected to your partner, uh, it all trickles down from there. Uh, studies have shown that couples who are closer, who have healthy, intimate lives, they also do better at work. So I would say, you know, make your friendship with your partner um, a, a priority and, and get out there. Uh, have some great, great, fabulous date nights. Again, if you need some tips, go to Facebook's page, uh, Couples Place where I've created some ideas. And so I, I would say those three really covered. If you want a fourth, just so I don't repeat the third, I would say get into the habit of um, making time to be intimate with your partner, as in having sex, at least once a week. I think it's really dangerous to get into a rut. Uh, in my mind, ruts, be, in my experience, ruts beget ruts. So you really need to be proactive. Um, and I would say make an effort to be intimate at least once a week. We can all do that at minimum. That is great advice. Five to one positive to negative interactions with a partner really hit home with me, doctor. And I'm just curious, I know you mentioned earlier about healthy relationships. How do we know that we have a healthy sex life? Well, I don't think it's about the quantity. I really do think it is about quality. And you know how uh, when it comes to dieting, we have these different food groups that we should always be consuming from to have a healthy diet. I think it's a little the same with your sex life. There are different um, kind of different groups of intimate activities, you know, sometimes there's uh, sex that's really all about the intimacy and the lovemaking and the emotional connection. Sometimes there's just sex for the sake of sex as stress relief. There's also sex that fuels the imagination and a sense of fantasy. Then there's uh, sex that's really all about the senses and that brings each of your senses alive. So I think, you know, in a, in a relationship, not only is it easy to get stuck in a rut, it's easy to get stuck doing the same thing over and over again and to get into what I just call comfort sex. And look, there's nothing wrong with some good old-fashioned comfort sex, but I would say remember that there's a whole world out there. Expand your horizons and always dig into one of these different groups a little bit. Doctor, thanks for helping us all be good and bad, and thanks for the great tips. Absolutely. My pleasure. Have a great day. All right. I have learned a lot. I may not have been as good as I thought I was in the bedroom, but now with these tips, we're going to be rocking it. At any rate, I loved how the doctor shared with us about the five to one, positive to negative. We all should start practicing that, but our next guest doesn't need that advice. She's all about love. In fact, she sent me a Valentine's card. I'll read what it has to say when Jane Seymour joins us next. Thank you so much for watching. Are you tired of negative news? We are. And that's why we're creating a movement. By keeping it real. With what you need to know. It's more than what's happening. It's bringing hope back to our lives. So go to contv.com and join our movement.